Hi, this is Jennifer Atkins Cordova, and I am showing you how I create rubrics um, to attach them to assignments for um, composition. So uh, I go directly to course tools and I will select rubrics. To really be ready, I need to have my rubric already set aside. Today I'm using the rubric that Jonathan has sent out, the, the thing titled Revised Grading Criteria Comp 2019 Update. I have this in front of me. I've already made modifications in it uh, because I want to make sure that my grades are within those ranges that are listed here. So I've made some modifications to the rubric and I've come up with this. I have 20% for thesis and focus, 25% for content and development, and so forth. I've chosen my ranges. Now I've got everything ready and I'm going to be able to create a rubric. When I go to create rubric, I'll be ready. Now, you might need one extra step here. So go to rubrics, go to create rubric. And here I'm going to create a rubric. I've named this rubric Project 3 Polished Final Draft. I use the word final in here because uh, Jonathan has requested that we do that for, that for that particular item. Now, when I scroll down here, I see that I have different levels of achievement. I have different criteria. They have a three by three rubric, but we're going to be creating a um, five columns, seven rows rubric. So I want to add a row and I'm going to add another row and another row. Now that I've made sure that I have seven rows and five columns, I'm now going to rename the items. I go into for, uh, this one that says for formatting, and I am going to edit it to show the writing that Jonathan has for us. See, thesis and focus. I want to go ahead and indicate to the student. I like to indicate that this one is worth 20% of the grade. And I push save. And I continue to do that throughout here. So I'm going to change this to 20%. I'm going to continue to do it throughout. After I've renamed all of my rows according to the rows in the rubric, and I've in, um, double I've double checked to make sure that my weights are accurate, I am now going to go in and change the names of the uh, levels of achievement. Now I can change the order of any of the levels of achieve, achievement, but we as uh, a department have determined that we don't really want to talk about like novice, competent, proficient. We want to be specific with these. So I also want to use specific terms inside of my columns, and I'm going to make those changes in the same way, right? So click down on the down arrow, and I click into edit. I've now changed all of the proficiency levels using the language that we have at the tops of our revised grading criteria, as shown here. We have A, superior proficiency, B, strong proficiency, C, adequate proficiency, D, weak proficiency, F, no proficiency. Um, I prefer to put the description of the proficiency before the letter grade, just uh, because that's the way that I do all of my other rubrics. You decide how you're going to do that. Next, I need to reassign my percentages. I just changed my rubric type from percent which is very, very specific. So I would assign what percent to percent range. So A, superior proficiency, I'm going to give it an A quality. So I'm going to say 90, 90 to 100. 
B. 82, 89, C, and so forth. I'm going to make that throughout the essay, throughout the rubric, sorry about that. After all of my um, percentages are logged into there, all the way down and through, now I need to add my um, criteria. I'm going to copy and paste directly from my Word document. I'm going to use uh, Control C for copy, Control V for paste, and I'm to, to facilitate this, I'm going to make it half sizes. Okay, drive this one over. Oh, sorry. A little bit, give myself a little bit more room on this one. It's tricky to, to work with the, the boundaries of uh, Blackboard. I found that it's easiest to do a column at a time. So I'm going to copy and paste, Control C. Control V. I'm selecting this one. And so forth and so on. Now that I've completed all of the items, I'm going to look at the I'm going to remove my um, <laughs> the things that are getting in the way of me seeing, and I'm going to look at the whole thing. So I've filled in all my boxes, all everything is clear on a, all 35 cells, and I'm going to click Submit. I click Submit, and now I have it in my rubric storage. Let me see if I can find it real quick for us. Let's see here. calling it my project three polished final draft. If I wanted to do a view, I would, uh, I could push open and I can see a view form. This might be useful to me if I want to print this off and make this part of like my face-to-face -face students peer reviews, or if I want to make it part of like, if I want to hand this out to my students as a way of like, knowing what their whole assignment is going to be about. This is what I would do. I can do it that way. Now I have to associate it to an actual assignment. And that is pretty easy to do. Um, I can show that to you here. To associate my rubric with an assignment, I must uh, go in and create the assignment first. Since this is not something that my students will experience until the end of the semester, I don't want to put it in, in um, a folder that they can view now. I, I choose to put it in my week 14 folder. I can move it later, but right now that's where I'm going to create it. I can uh, attach files. I want to create the due date, December 2nd or before, and I have a whole lot of points associated with it, 250 points. I add my rubric, I'm going to select my rubric. The rubric that I just created, Project 3 Polished Final Draft, that's the one I'm selecting. I'm clicking Submit, and it associates it with it. Now, here, Show Rubric to Students, I want to show my rubric to students. I want them to see it with the rubric scores. If I do not change this default, my students are not going to be able to see the rubric. So I click Yes with rubric scores and then I make my submission detail changes that I prefer to make for my students. Do multiple attempts, I do two attempts, I keep it on last graded, I have them check for submissions, um, check submissions for plagiarism using um, Safe Assign. When they grade it, when I grade it, uh, when, when they see the grades, they're going to get, see the primary score and the percentage, and all of that is as, as it should be, I click Submit. And voila, I now have an assignment in my week 14 folder. I hope that this helps. 
if you choose to do point ranges instead of percent ranges, your rubric, uh, you're, you're just going to have to figure out what individual points would be for 10% of whatever that assignment is. And actually, I generally prefer to do that. Today, I, I showed you how to create a percent point range rubric. I hope that this helps you.